So I'm here with Greg Hardwick, and we're sitting outside of a very unique construction project. What can you tell us about this? Well, this home is going to be built to the Florida Green Building Coalition standard. It's a custom home on a uh, infill lot. It was a vacant lot that uh, the house had been demolished a couple years ago. Owners came in, bought the lot, and wanted us to build a uh, brand new custom home on it. Florida Green Building Coalition is the standard. It'll qualify for a few others, um, but we're going to target and focus on Florida Green Building Coalition standard on this project. One of the things that we're doing is, uh, first of all, we're making the house very energy efficient and very durable. So to do that, we're using insulated concrete forms. The provider and installer of those concrete forms is a company called Green Block, and we'll talk to them a little bit later as we get through the house. All right, Greg, so can you take us for a tour of this? Yeah, right now, I just want to tell you, watch your step as you're going through the house. You can see how we have two concrete trucks waiting right here. What they're doing is they're uh, filling the forms on the second floor. We've already done the first floor. We did that about three weeks ago. Now we're filling the foam forms. So that's mostly what we're going to be doing today. As we walk through the house, I'll show you a few things that we're doing in the framing stages to keep this thing energy efficient and green. So I got a moment to catch up with Jeff Alexander, who actually, uh, your two companies are manufacturing and installing these eco uh, concrete blocks. What can you tell me about this process? That's correct. We're very pleased to be a trade partner for Hardwick Construction on this project. We uh, manufacture our insulated concrete forms nationally through, for Green Block, and then insulated concrete walls is our contracting arm where we furnish and install the blocks for our trade partners. So what are the, what are the benefits of insulated concrete walls versus traditional concrete? Uh, 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 there's a s several aspects, the, the uh, sustainability, the protection against storms, the inherent insulating factor, and the overall quiet and just provides comfort for the occupant. So potentially a homeowner who chooses to use insulated concrete walls could save money in their energy to pay for any kind of uh, price difference. Now is there a big price difference between traditional concrete block and uh, insulated concrete walls? It's a little bit more but the payback period is very short. So indeed, somebody that's interested in doing the right thing for their own home will save on the long run. You know, one of the first things we want to do in green building is we want to protect the trees as much as possible. That's why we have tree protection up everywhere. You'll see the orange fence on this side and this side. We also want to protect stormwater runoff. So we put silt screen up around the entire perimeter of the uh, site, except for where we're going to be accessing regularly. And that silt keeps any time it rains. We even let the grass grow through and the grass around it. Because any time it rains, the uh, water will have a, uh, or the soil will have an opportunity to stop. And if there's grass there, it'll have an opportunity to filter the soil out before the water starts hitting the sidewalks and streets. Okay, this is our green block insulated concrete form being used on the Hardwick construction project today. You can see here that we have the insulation on the outside. And then on the inside, we have a sandwich full of concrete. We stack the rebar, and then we place concrete, and the form stays in place and has huge added benefits to the occupant. The webs are made from 100% recycled polypropylene, and the expanded polystyrene, while it's not made with recycled content, it is 100% post-job recyclable. We've been taking bags of waste out to Blue Earth Solutions who does 100% of the recycling for us on this project. But effectively this is a stay in form concrete placement system. You would just stack these up per the construction drawings and we're placing rebar as we go along and then as you can see today we're placing concrete in the forms. Another thing that we do for recycling and, and waste management is our uh, dumpster company takes all of the waste to a recycling plant and they recycle everything that can be recycled. The last job that we did in Winter Park, there was only 5% of the construction waste on that job that could not be recycled. The rest of it was recyclable. One of the things we've done with this house is we actually kind of have a hybrid ICF and block design. Um, ICF is very good for strength, durability, and energy efficiency, um, but it's a little bit more than block. <clears throat> so where we had the opportunity in uninsulated areas to do block, we did block. It still has the strength and durability, <clears throat> doesn't necessarily have the energy efficiency. Um, so that's why you see some block on the job, and then that's why you see some ICF block on the job. This is your regular standard 8-inch block construction for the areas that we weren't worried about for energy efficiency, like the garage. 
and then you sleep over to the standard uh, insulated concrete form system on the thermal barrier of the house. Okay, so another thing that we do on all of our construction sites, especially when we have a lot of concrete use, um, is we put a what we call a washout uh, dumpster in here is basically what it is. And what it enables us to do <clears throat> is when the concrete companies need to wash out their tank every time they, they uh, you know, provide concrete on the site and it goes down and out of their uh, tank, it needs to be washed. That inside barrel needs to be washed to keep the concrete from sticking into their barrel so they can use it again and again and again. Plus, it's able to be recycled. So what this does is it protects the site, it gives them a good area to wash out in and put all that concrete residue into one little trap, if you will, and then our concrete company, or our, not our concrete company, but the, um, the company that supplies these washout tanks for us takes it away and they go take it to a plant that'll recycle that concrete. Another thing that you'll see throughout the house that I do as a builder is I do pressure treated wood on all the wet walls. So anywhere that you're gonna see plumbing, anywhere that there's a potential for any kind of humidity or dampness, I use pressure treated wood. It's a borate pressure treated wood. Borate's a lot less toxic than some of the other treatments that they use. Um, and it's basically one of our standards. All right, so as you can see, we've moved inside now. You can already tell how cooler it is. I think a lot of that is a benefit of the shade, but also the, the uh, thermally insulated walls at this point. Um, one of the things that we've done, and you can see what the green block looks like on the inside. It's very smooth, uh, very easy to be finished. We're gonna be able to come in and uh, do our rough trades right through the form. Uh, if you can see right here where the plumbing just kind of fits in, they can get a little hot knife and do their electric and their plumbing right into the walls. And then we'll, we're able to apply drywall right to the foam. And the way the drywallers know where to put their screws is each one of these little strips that has green block on it is where that webbing meets the foam and the screws just penetrate and attach right through to that. So that's kind of the, uh, the marker, if you will, for drywallers and other interior finishes. Another thing that we're doing here is we're doing a um, aging in place house. Um, so this house does have a two-stop elevator system, and that's the elevator shaft right there. Also, another thing that we're doing for uh, uh, material resource uh, is where, uh, for benefits in material resource, is we're using a figure jointed lumber on the inside partitions. And you see it frames up just like everything else. It just looks a little different. It's a little rougher. It'll have little holes in it. So what they've elected to do is take some of the smaller pieces that they would have discarded and thrown away and finger joint them together to make them more the links of what the nominal lumber is that we would use out on a construction site. Basically, anytime you see a finger joint, you can kind of think of that as saving a piece of wood that would have been discarded. All right, so now one of the things that has kind of been uh, very important to us is when you build green, it needs to be marketable. Um, a, lot of a lot of people, I think, associate green with having to be funky, and it really doesn't have to be funky. The home that we're building here, even though it's green, has a very good feel and style that's very prevalent in the neighborhood. Now there's still some older homes that are being redone and, and those kind of things, but for Winter Park, that's very marketable and very prevalent style. So that wraps up our first uh, Eco Home Site Tour. Uh, what can we expect next week when we come back to see you? Well, Nate, next time all the concrete will be poured, all the forms will be gone, the blue forms and the wood that you see. So what you'll probably see is just the white shell of the house, uh, the trusses on the second floor, um, so everything will be dried in, and you'll start seeing some of the rough-in utilities or some of the rough-in trades that we put in, like the electric, the plumbing, the HVAC system, uh, possibly some uh, spray foam insulation that we would put up in the roof deck. We're also putting another product that's kind of unique um, called the Zip Roof uh, System, which is a system that you'll see more thoroughly next time, and, and I'll go into more detail at, at that point. So next time we'll be in our rough framing stage doing all the trade work.